We're all here today to explore the mutual benefits of networks. And mutuality is at the heart of what we're about as the British Council in education, in society, teaching English, and of course, in the arts. And for me, that's what makes cultural relations, which is our business, different from traditional diplomacy. Traditional diplomacy is ultimately about serving the national interest. Now, we think that the national interest is best served through creation of that mutual value, value for all the parties involved. So, of course, we want British artists to benefit from collaboration and networks. And we want artists and practitioners from other European countries to benefit too. Art Connects Us is the name of our 2021 art strategy. It has five pillars. One of them is about brokering and connecting. I get a lot of feedback from the sector here and internationally. And something I hear consistently is that what people value most about what we do is just that. Networking, brokering, connecting, helping other people forge partnerships. Now, we published Art Connects Us in May 2016. That was the month before the UK voted to leave the European Union. And since then, we've done a lot of thinking. We've done a lot of talking. But mostly, we've done a lot of listening to work out how we might reimagine our EU arts programme. We held a series of events in Berlin, Madrid and London with senior people in arts and education from across Europe, including many of you, to hear what they thought Britain's future relationship with Europe should look like in their sector. And from that, we produced a communique. And that communique has influenced the UK's current policy position a joint statement by the EU and the UK has confirmed that negotiations will include discussion of a cultural accord governing ongoing cultural collaboration between the two parties. And the UK's Prime Minister has stated an aim to secure continued participation in EU cultural programmes. Next week, I'll be in Brussels for a conference that Bozara are hosting, which will take this conversation to the next stage I'm so pleased that they have invited us to partner with them on that. Anyway, we're not here to talk about the politics, or at least not too much. Um, one thing that I believe in really passionately is the role of culture to keep us connected when the politics gets difficult. We were in South Africa through apartheid. We keep working in Venezuela, in Yemen, in countries where it's politically and operationally really tough. That long-term connection through culture is what keeps us all afloat in the hardest of times. Sometimes we need to remind ourselves that whatever is happening politically, that fundamental need to make art, to understand ourselves and each other through art, and to connect through artistic endeavour, is part of what makes us human. This is true across all times and all cultures. The UK's culture history, our values, many of our greatest achievements as a nation abound with the rest of Europe. Our arts, our music, our literature, our scientific discoveries, even our sporting achievements have benefited hugely from close partnership, ease of travel, free movement of ideas, and shared creativity with our European partners. When he presented the Brexit big band in Berlin, part of our Germany season, Matthew Herbert said, it's really important we stand up for the idea that arts and culture and the imagination and creative expression are at the very front of any relationship Britain has with anybody. And that's why you're here today at the Barbican. And that's why we value our own role in leading the Creative Europe UK desk in a set of partnerships that spans the whole of the UK. It's great to see so many of you here from across different European countries and from different sectors. And I hope this is a rewarding day for all of you today. We will be launching our refreshed EU art strategy across the UK and Europe later this year and early next. See you there.